Um, let me ask you something. Okay, what are some of the uh, analogies you've heard from the Trinity? And only people who have not been in my classes before are going to answer this question. Yeah. Like an egg. Like an egg. <laughs> Incredible edible egg. Um, right. So do you, ex do you explain to us uh, the uh, egg analogy? An egg is three parts in one. It's the shell, yolk, and a white. Uh, right. So we've got our, our triune egg. <laughs> Which is uh, shell, yolk, shell. white. Yolk, white, and shell, something like that. Okay, so there's our there's our triune egg. Um, okay, what else have we heard? The ice. The ice. The ice. So we can have uh, H2O can be a, a solid, a liquid, or a gas, right? Okay, so three different states uh, for the one compound. Um, all right, what else do we have? Yes. Uh, so we've got um, Bob. No, let's get rid of his name. Uh, this guy over here, uh, he, is a, he is a father to someone. He is the son of someone, and he is a, a husband? Brother. Brother? Brother, okay. Brother, okay, whatever. Yeah, we don't want to make him a husband. Then we got a quaternity. <laughs> Maybe we heard the pie. Oh yeah. What's the pie? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, let's see. What is it? It's cut into three. Okay. This is pretty standard. I always enjoy doing this part because I get to tell you all oh, these are heresies. Uh, so, so the three the three common ones are you either have uh, you have uh, one pole that has three parts. Uh, so this would be you know this one over here, um, the egg. Oh, there's also like an apple. One. I'm sorry, I get distracted with the drawing. Once I get going. Okay, so three parts, one whole. Uh, you got the egg. You know, egg yolk, egg white uh, shell. The uh, the apple is in the, in the pie one. So you got these over here, three parts, one whole. Uh, another one is that you have uh, one something. Here it's a compound uh, and three states. For the H two O analogy, right? Uh, and then you've got this other. Um, Thing with this one one dude and uh, three rolls. Look at this. Okay, like so, okay. So let's say uh, the the one dude uh, three rolls. Uh, this one is actually this is closest to uh, what would be called Noetianism, uh, espoused by uh, Noetus of Smyrna. Which uh, you'll find if you look up a Noetianism, John of Damascus talks about it. Uh, Noetus of Smyrna talks about uh, the son being a, uh, a father son. So in his role as the son, he is the son, but in his role in heaven, he's a father to himself. And so he's got these different roles, but he's a father son. Uh, this might also, maybe, maybe, also be Paulinism, uh, referring to. Um, Paul Samasada, but we know less about what it precisely his view entails. Uh, but nonetheless, it was it's an early Christian heresy. Um, the one compound three states. Uh, there's two ways of reading it. Um, so the one way of reading it is a uh, Sabellianism. So this is where uh, what you have is you have one guy, God. And then you have three masks, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and it keeps on showing up with different masks. But behind them all, it's the same dude, right? Uh, that's Sabellianism, also sometimes referred to as modalism, that God shows up in different modes of being. Uh, that's one way of reading it. Another way of reading it, that's reading, you know, A. Reading B, if you really wanted to take it literally, then you would say, well, what it's claiming is that you got this sort of amorphous divinity down here, that actually somehow bubbles up into, you know, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, you know, something like that. Um, this Basil of Caesarea refers to in uh, Epistle 52, Section 2, 
as blasphemous and insane. So you don't want this one. And then the three parts in one whole. It's sort of tough to label this one because nobody even goes in for this one. Like, this is considered insane by even the heretics. Uh, so the closest thing you have and, well, and I should say, the reason is because they're all presuming, well, God is spirit, and as spirit, he doesn't have parts. So how do you start talking about three parts that make up one whole? That's not a compound entity. The closest thing you get to this are the uh, tripedes. Um, John Philipponis, also known as John the Grammarian, is the most well-known proponent of, tri -the of the uh, tripede heresy. Um, you have his views preserved, actually, in uh, John of Damascus's text there. Um, this one, what he does is he actually suggests this. Okay, so you have three guys, Peter, and John, and James. Okay, but what he would say is then when you take humanity, the nature human, right, and you put it into each one of these guys, now it's sort of broken up, right, so that my humanity and your humanity are different which ends up with really three persons and three natures. And that's why they were called tritheids, because they're like, look, man, you got, you got, you just got three. That's all you got. You got, you know, three and three. Three persons having three discrete natures. Thank you. One possible response to this is to say, ah, you know, so what? You know, they're all analogies. Analogies are fundamentally flawed. Here's the problem with that response. It's presuming this. Any analogy, just by virtue of being analogy, is false. But let me ask you something. Um, when I say that God is wise, and then I say uh, my pastor is wise, do I mean precisely the same thing? Okay. But if I say um, President Obama is a powerful man, uh, God is powerful. Do I mean precisely the same thing? No. Okay. What if I said, Randy, the Lord is my shepherd? Do I mean precisely the same thing when I mean Bob over down in, you know, sheep country as a shepherd? No. No. Yeah, this is the problem, that whenever we're talking about God, we're talking analogically. Christian theology is always affirmed that. Whenever you talk about God, it's always different. You're using words that you use in the created realm, but in reference to God, it always means something different. But yet, they still presume that analogies can be true or false. So if I said God is a swindler, he's a cheat, now, that would be blasphemous. But would it be an analogy? I mean, would I mean the same thing I mean when I mean the guy at the casino is a cheat? No. It would be an analogy, but it would be false. So here's a question. I've got two analogies. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is a swindler. Which one's true and which one's false? Or are they both false just because they're both analogies? One's true one's false. One's true, it's one, which one's true? Shepherd. shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I would hope you would say that's true. So not all analogies are created equal, and just because it's an analogy doesn't mean it's false. So here's a question. Is there any proper analogy when we're talking about the Trinity? Uh, let's start with the terms. What is the doctrine of the Trinity? What do we profess when we say we believe in three what and one? Well, what are the terms? What have you heard? Three persons. Three persons. Three persons. Okay. One essence. One essence. Um, is there a consensus on that? Uh, is that what we got here? Everybody's on board with essence? Mm -hmm. Anybody want to give a different term? Nature. Nature? Okay. Anybody want a different word? You got you got one God, all right. Anybody want a different word? Anybody ever heard being thrown out? One yeah. being? Mm -hmm. Has anybody ever heard anything other than persons? Particulars? Yeah, you heard that from me. <laughs> um, <laughs> Oh, substance. That's another one that's sometimes... What entity do you want? Entity? Uh, okay, well, we'll throw it up here. Why not? <laughs> I've heard you expressions for persons. You've, you've expressions. heard expressions? Yeah. Is that heretical? I'm sorry to hear that. Is that like modalism? <laughs> <laughs>
Here, let's talk about these terms, okay? This term, uh, these terms are based largely on the Latin, right? So you were dealing with persona and substantia, right? So you could see how you would immediately go to the, you know, the obvious translation of persona, right? Person. Over here with substance, you could see how you would go to substance from substantia. But actually, all of these, except for that one, are synonyms. And that one. Uh, are synonyms. But here's the problem, right? So this is where language starts to get a little funny because in the ancient world these terms had clear meanings. But for us they kind of take on, it gets a little hazy, right? So when you hear a uh, being, right? You actually kind of think something like entity, right? So it sounds like you're saying, well, three guys who make up one guy. And right? that's kind of what it sounds like sometimes. Uh, substance. We tend to use substance for like amorphous stuff. I was walking along and I came upon this weird substance. Um, so that gives us, you know, that sort of blasphemous, insane thing where you get this amorphous stuff that turns into the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Um, nature or essence is actually more accurate, but they're all synonyms. Here's the terms, okay? Three, if we want to use the Greek terms. Hypostasis, and over here, usia. Okay? We'll stick with the Greek terms rather than the Latin ones. Okay? So what do these terms mean? Okay, well, I'll give you an instance of a hypostasis. Yeah, probably a daisy. No, it's not a daisy. Do we have a flower expert refuting the daisy interpretation? <laughs> All right. Yeah, they're hidden. You know, they're trying to keep them. <laughs> it's the jumping legs. All right. All right, but here you go. Um, all three of these are, are instances of three hypostases with one of them. This is what the term means. We see it means the common nature. So here, the common nature is a frog. And see you see it. And then you know uh, this is this is Bob. This is Bill. Jeremiah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it's, he's a bullfrog, right? Yeah. Wow. There it is. Oh, that, that threw uh, off my, my you know. Alliteration would be <laughs> all right. Okay, but so and then these are these are three uh, hypostases. Uh And then over here we've got I, I don't have names for these, uh, but these two are three hypostases of the flower Lucia. Who's yawning? <laughs> Steve. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here you go. Uh, usia, it means the common nature. So here, the usia of these three is frog. Over here, the usia of these is flower, and it would be more specific than that, but we'll daisy, apparently. Our, our flower expert tells us they're not daisies. But. And then over here, uh, the usia is human. That's what usia means. It's the common nature had by multiple particulars. And what is a hypostasis? Well, a hypostasis, uh, well, it's, it's a little broader than person, right? Because a flower, we tend to think of persons as rational, thinking, relational things, right? Mm -hmm. I don't call, I don't go into my garden and say, ah, isn't this a beautiful person? You know, it's not the sort of thing you do. Uh, so anyway, uh, but these would be three hypostases of this nature. Uh, but so with these, Peter, James, and John. So this is where they are, uh, they're particulars. Particulars who have a certain nature. Okay. Now whether or not they're relational or rational or whatever depends on what nature they have. Over here it's not a rational or relational nature, over here it is. Uh, so that depends on the context of it. But that's all you're talking about. When you say three hypostases, one usia. What's your reaction to that? It sounds like three gods. <clears throat> How many people here have that reaction? 
That sounds like tritheism. That sounds like three gods, yeah. Didn't we have a council condemning you or something? Hmm? Did they already condemn you at a council or something? What, are you referring to John Philippanus? Yeah, John the Grammarian? <laughs> well, I appreciate you pulling out that little historical factoid. Uh, yes, John Phil. It does sound like John Philippotus. Yeah, you'll remember that this one is exactly the one I used to explain John Philippotus. So, what's the difference here? Well, the difference is this. So, uh, when you say it sounds like three gods, do we believe in three gods? Uh, Ablabius asked Gregory of Nyssa the same question. He wrote to Gregory of Nyssa, and Oblavius says, do we believe in three gods or one? Because if I'm hearing you right, we believe in three particulars who have a common nature. And when I see three human hypostases, I say three humans. So do we believe in three gods? And Gregory of Nyssa wrote back a letter called uh, Not Three Gods, because this is Gregory's answer for why the Christian Orthodox position is not professed three gods. Here's Gregory's question for you. How many humans are there? One. Three? Well, how many people want to say three? Show of hands. Let's see them. Okay, how many want to say one? Oh, come on, don't be so sheepish, one people. Okay, there's a few you want to say one. Gregory would say that the folks who said one are correct, and this is why. He says it's a common abuse of language to refer to this as three humans. Why? Well, because human is a species term, a nature term, an essence term. Let me ask you the question, how many types of thing are here? Uh, how many species of thing are here? How many humanities are here? One. That's right. And that's why I'd say, if you were actually being technical in the way you spoke, you would say three, human, singular, person, plural. Because in this structure, what you're identifying is the number of persons, and human is telling you the type of particulars you have and should be singular, because it's a nature or essence term. And there aren't multiple natures here, there's only one. Now this is a subtle point of metaphysics. This is the orthodox position. John Philippanus, who our friend over here brought up. John's uh, uh, point is actually, he ends up suggesting that Peter's humanity is not Paul's humanity, and Paul's humanity is not, in other words, he treats humanity like it's something particular, rather than something shared by multiple particulars. He doesn't actually believe in a common nature. But the Orthodox do believe in a common nature. You and I have a common nature. There are three human persons. That's the difference. That's the important difference. John had three particulars with three distinct natures. He had three humans. Gregory and the Orthodox said, no, 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 that's false. One who see a three particulars who have it. Let's stick with this question about how many gods we believe in. Because there are qualifications, right? When we say my, my pastor is, is very knowledgeable, God is very knowledgeable, right? Uh, you've got all sorts of qualifications you've got to throw out here, uh, but there's still some sort of star analogical starting point. This is our analogical starting point. What qualifications are needed? Well, we'll come back to that in a second. Um, are Christians monotheists or tritheists? So if we're just looking at the term, the etymology of the term, right? One God. Uh, is that true? Do Christians believe in one God? Well, there are three possible uses for the word God. So when you say God, give me a sentence with the word God. In it. God created the heavens and the earth. Okay. To, to whom or to what are you referring to when you say that? What's the reference for the word God in that? Uh, like the Hebrew word? No, I'm just asking, what do you, when you say that, what do you mean? I mean, he's creator. <coughs> Who's he? I'm, that's what I'm trying to figure out. What are you referring to? God refers to what? Um, By the way, the just FYI, <laughs> you'd be amazed how befuddled people are if you asked them that question. Because <laughs> we've grown accustomed to this using it, using that noun, and not even thinking about what we're saying. So, 
What are you talking about? Are you talking about Jesus? Are you talking about, about the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, the whole Trinity, the divine nature? I mean, what are you, what are you, what are you saying? Yeah. You're nodding your head to all of those. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Yes. You, sir, give me a sentence <laughs> that has God in it. Um, I love God. Okay. Right. Who are you talking about? What are you talking about? Um, I'm talking about the, the Godhead and what I was going to ask you. Godhead. I don't know what that means. What does that mean? That means, like, if those three right there, uh -huh. what I was going to ask you was, like, what if you just connected them at the hands? You mean the whole Trinity? Right, that's what I'm saying. Like, one guy. We'll come back to your hand holding. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Holy Trinity. Okay. That is one. That's one reference that's really common today, I think. I think a lot of people agree with you that that's what they mean, okay? But you should know that that's actually historically rather peculiar. It doesn't appear in Greek-speaking literature. I would submit it doesn't appear in your New Testament. God, God, God does agree. You can disagree. That's fine. I'm right. <laughs> when the New Testament uses the word God, it's not referring to all three simultaneously. Oh, okay. Okay. And even when you think of the Nicene Creed, anybody started memorizing the Nicene Creed? How does the Nicene Creed use the word God in the first sentence? It doesn't say, I believe in one God, the Creator. What does it say? I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty. Which is also how uh, the New Testament tends to use it as well. But there is one other use. Um, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was... God, uh, what is being said here? Is it saying, and the Word was the Father? No. Is it saying, the Word was the Trinity? No. So what's it saying? Divine. Nature, divine. Ah, yes. Well done. Uh, that's what's called a predicate nominative use. Uh, for those of you who are taking Greek, you know what this means. You're identifying the type of thing. So in the first instance, you have a subject with a definite article, which is referring to, and the Word was, distinct from, but with, the Father. In the second instance, what you have is the definite article drops out and the sentence structure is predicate nominative, so it's identifying the type of thing the word was. And the word, too, was God. Meaning, just like if I said, uh, Randy is human. I'm saying the type of thing Randy is the same type of thing I am. Okay. Divine nature. But here's a question. How many uh, fathers are there? One father. Okay. So this, is, so this one is uh, singular. Okay. Um, how many divine natures are there? One. One. Yes, that's correct. Remember what we were talking about over there? Uh, unless, of course, you're a follower of John Philipponus, and then that's, you're all up the crook here. Uh, all right, what about how many holy trinities are there? One. Okay. So let me ask you, based on the three ways in which Christians use the word God, are they monotheists? Yeah. yeah, And that's a point that Cornelius Plantinga makes, is he said, look, no matter how Christians use the term God, the three reference are always singular. And so they're rightly called monotheists. However, if you still feel that a trick has been played on you, <laughs> allow me to dispel that sentence. All right. Let me ask you a question. Uh, Jew or a Muslim, I'm here I'm presuming not, you know, a New Testament Jew or a Christian. I'm talking about a non-Christian uh, Jew. How many uh, natures does the Jew and the Muslim believe in? One. One. Okay, yes? What about the Christian? How many natures? Divine natures? One. One. Okay, yes? Greek polytheists? Lots and lots. Lots and lots and lots. Yes, actually, this is a really important point. For the uh, Greek polytheists, God is a genus. So you could just infer this just by looking at the different you know, deities, that some are celestial, some are terrestrial, some are aquatic, whatever, right? Um, but the Greek, or the Greek church fathers themselves who are surrounded by polytheism, they know full well what poly, Greek polytheism is. They suggest that this is part and parcel of Greek polytheism. 
They believe that God is a genius and there are many natures. And that's one of the reasons they identify the Arians who think that the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit have all a different nature, and the Tritheists who think Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit have all a different nature, as falling into Greek polytheism, because they believe in multiple natures in a common particular. Now, here's a question. Jew slash Muslim, non-Trinitarian Jew, of course. Um, how many particulars do they think have the divine nature? One. Uh -huh. Christians? Ah. Polytheists? Greek polytheists? <laughs> There's a whole lot of them. A whole lot of them. Many. Um, that's a big difference. And there's no getting rid of that difference. FYI, if you get rid of that difference, you're not a Trinitarian anymore. Okay? Now, this should be a really obvious point that Trinitarians disagree with non Trinitarians. And yet, for a lot of people, that's a shock. They've been so accustomed to calling themselves monotheists without any qualification, they really think they agree with people who aren't Trinitarians. <laughs> but you do, if you're really a Trinitarian. There's no getting around that. Okay? And this is one of the things Gregory of Nyssa in his great catechism, he says, look, he says, uh, we affirm the one usia, and in doing so we reject Greek polytheism. <laughs> So we're on that side of that line. But in rejecting Greek polytheism, we do not fall into the error of the Jews who deny that God has a son or a spirit. So on this part, we're actually distinct from both camps. So there's still a monotheism over here, over against this. But Trinitarian monotheism is distinct from other forms of monotheism. It's unique. Are we monotheists? Yeah. No matter how we use the word, we use it in the singular. But are we the same as a Jewish monotheist? No. Why don't we take a quick break before we uh, go into talking about the important qualifications that needed to be need to be added to this so that we don't fall into uh, conflating God and creatures.